All right. Okay. We're, we're giving this award to uh, Ed Storms today. We're really happy to do that uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is uh, creativity. Ed has been very creative in this field ever since the beginning. I think he leaped in like uh, hundreds of other people did and started started working full full blast. Never stopped. That's that's the one thing that uh, impresses me. The other thing is intellectual distinction. Ed has a very distinguished career at Los Alamos for 37 years. Okay, and that's, uh, that's a very long time. And then another 23 or 20 uh, in this field. And he's uh, published something like 70 papers, uh, peer-reviewed papers, and uh, four books. Two books, I think, uh, prior to Cold Fusion, and then two he co-authored with other people. So he's uh, he's a pretty uh, prolific author. The other thing is um, that uh, I, I feel is very good about Ed is that uh, he's he's got intellectual uh, 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 integrity. Um, one of the things you want to do in the science area is be open. You want to uh, divulge everything you you know, and Ed has done that. He's he's been a, an educator for the field, and that's uh, that, that's something we need is openness, uh, because I, I know several incidents where people who are researchers have held back uh, some critical data and has held the field back. The other um, the other thing that's uh, uh, quite uh, remarkable about Ed uh, is the uh, the, the, uh, just the, the same contribution that he's, he's given to the field. Um, you know, I've been on and off in this area because I've been working, but Ed uh, has found a way to just keep going as, as long as possible. And all through the ups and downs, I mean, you know, people can get discouraged, as good well said, and that's a pretty common uh, feature of everyone who's been working in this field. But Ed has had the enthusiasm and persistence to just keep going here. Uh, he's got a, a distinguished lineage, and uh, this is his mentor uh, at uh, University of Washington, uh, Joseph Kennedy. This is a picture of uh, Joe when he was uh, at Los Alamos. This is the actual Los Alamos badge picture. He's actually pretty, pretty good badge, badge picture. I think one of the better ones. <laughs> you have to, you have to see. Uh, Kitty Oppenheimer, to uh, appreciate that bad, bad, bad. You, you recognize this guy, right? Did I get the right guy? Yeah, that's right. That's right. This is in his younger. Well, smart people attract smart people, and if if you're smart at a university, you just don't take any anybody off the street. So uh, he was a co-discoverer of uh, plutonium along with uh, Glenn Seberg and uh, Macmillan, and uh, uh, left Los Alamos. Uh, about the time that everybody thought it was going to fold. Okay. So he, he went and uh, started this um, uh, program in radiochemistry at the University of Washington in St. Louis. And that's where Ed graduated with his PhD from. But while he was there, um, there was a little bit of uh, connection back to Los Alamos. And uh, this, of course, is a laboratory right now. Currently, uh, it's a beautiful place, great weather. Uh, advertisement for the, the area. Uh, it has a little more bureaucracy than we would like. Okay? Ed, Ed, Ed was in the good gravy days when uh, they would leave you alone and you could do a lot of work. So, uh, but at any rate, he came to Los Alamos uh, as a summer student a couple of times. And of course, uh, once you're there and you've worked there and it's, it's nice, so you go back and uh, and uh, he, he found a job in the material science division. Um, they probably did a sort of uh, a bait and switch thing where they said, okay, you're gonna be working in the cutting edge of nuclear radiochemistry because this is an un unknown project. But um, uh, he wound up doing uh, uh, other things. And, uh, but while he was at the University of Washington, um, he, he had another connection to Los Alamos. And that was, uh, while he was there doing his radiochemistry work, uh, the uh, alarms in the building went off. And uh, it turned out that one of these nuclear tests out in Nevada had spread that radioactive fallout all the way to St. Louis and dropped it. And uh, the, uh, everyone ran out of the room, okay, out of the building, 
were with the Geiger counters and were checking everything to see what, what had happened. Turned out the, ra the, the radioactivity was coming from the, the water, a, a rainfall. And the puddles were highly radioactive. In fact, had told me that uh, in order to take a sample of that water back into the building, you would have had a, had a permit. <laughs> so, so that was, you know, the 50s, okay? 50s were pretty, pretty nasty from that standpoint. But um, uh, the uh, thing that uh, Ed finally worked, uh, I think they, they convinced him to work on because it was a giant program in Los Alamos in the uh, 50s and 60s, was a nuclear rocket. And so these were some of the first reactors that were ever built. They were uh, very high density, uh, very small, compact reactors. You were going to put a lot of hydrogen through those reactors, and uh, that was going to uh, uh, power us to you know, Mars and things like this. Although probably what the real reason was we were going to bomb Russia with, <laughs> with these things. But they, uh, they, they, they did have this other story. And uh, one of the, uh, so these things needed, these were really cutting edge technology, perhaps past cutting edge technology. A lot of uranium in there, the first reactors, high power density, two megawatts in this little tiny thing. And, uh, and what we needed was we needed a lot of thermophysical properties of uranium nitride, carbide, boron, uh, lanthanum, uh, uranium, things like this. So we had worked on this, you let a group uh, at Los Alamos for 27 years to do this sort of thing. Um, let's see if this is not working. Okay, just press the button under here. All right. Okay. So what they did was they took this uh, rocket out <coughs> into uh, Nevada, and uh, of course they had the you know 20 tons of uh, hydrogen fuel next to it. So they took it, and they, they brought it out to Nevada, and if you try to do this now, you know, the program manager would say, well, you know, take this, yeah, bring out the straight jacket, okay. So, but, but back then it was, it was perfectly acceptable. Take it out there and um, set it off. And there's actually, uh, I found a YouTube video, which I'm not gonna show you because no videos will work uh, anyway. But uh, you can look it up, and it, it, it worked pretty well. But uh, of course there were some Failures <laughs> and uh, pretty high order failure. Uh, at any rate, they canceled that program. You, you know, this is uranium going off and all sorts of other stuff. And, and of course, this is before the EPA. Okay, now, so so that that's a project that uh, you worked on. The the other one was uh, the SP uh, 100 project. That was the follow on. Um, now, if you look at this kind of closely, it's got a nose cone, it's got an ablation shield, kind of looks like a bomb, okay? And it's got a, uh, a reactor right up in the, in the nose. I must have turned this off somehow. But at any rate, um, this project went on for quite some time, and, and, and Ed was involved in that. Two of uh, these projects, you know, are, are large uh, laboratory projects. Uh, so, uh, I have all this material, and I'm not going to go through it all. I'm sorry, Ed. Okay. <laughs> but you're going to be relieved. You're going to be relieved I don't go through it all. Um, at any rate, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, amazes me about Ed is the, the energy he's had, and he's been publishing uh, this material. You can see in all of these publications that the, the thing is that he, he's one of the few scientists I know, and, and there are other people here too, who published uh, popular accounts of cold fusion. Okay? So he's a popularizer of cold fusion as well as doing real science. And the other thing that really, um, really impresses me is that he's been a defender of cold fusion to critics. So um, he was one of, the, one of the people who wrote a rebuttal to the DOE uh, uh, in terms of their, their review, their second review of uh, cold fusion. So um, there's, a, there's a few other things about Ed. Um, I'm, I'm really deeply uh, indebted to him because um, we've collaborated on various things. He's lived in and around Los Alamos and White Rock uh, near the historic Ottawa Station. And uh, now he's got a nice house on the, on the hill 
uh, in Hyde Park overlooking Santa Fe and actually kind of overlooking Los Alamos. But um, uh, I, I don't know how he did it. I can't do it. And I, I doubt too many other people could do it. But he built this whole house, and he's still publishing stuff. And um, the, the, the way he built the house was sort of in two steps. And I think Carol Storms had a little bit of input into that because the Cold Fusion Laboratory is away from the house. <laughs> so you know, he, could, he has a walkway, but it's still got uh, some distance there. I know my wife wouldn't, wouldn't like me to uh, burn the house down. So at any rate, he's, uh, uh, he's been active in the community as well. He's uh, on the, um, the water uh, commission for his uh, neighborhood. <laughs> and uh, he's done a lot of uh, work in the community in terms of the, the playhouse, which uh, explains uh, why he's got good deliveries of uh, uh, material. So, in, you know, in conclusion, I think the field owes a considerable amount of debt to Ed for his early attempts uh, to prepare and consolidate, especially all the cold fusion materials uh, from the meeting and the literature. Uh, some of this might have been lost. Uh, you can't you can't find it, but that Lenar canner site with uh, Jed is very useful for everyone. And um, you know, everyone here knows that this effort is a high risk and an even higher payoff. And we have to uh, acknowledge those people who've uh, basically sacrificed a lot of their career and uh, a lot of their time uh, to uh, helping everybody here. So uh, we'd like to again thank Ed for his Herculean efforts in this area. Thank you very much. This is uh, unexpected. And the fact is, this is the first award that I've ever had after giving a talk about uh, about theory. I, I think I think maybe I picked the wrong field. But I want to thank you all because none of my work would be possible without the contribution that many of you have made. It's this is not. A, a single individual, it isn't just a few individuals, it's a, it has to be a, a very large group making the contribution and all of you really should be giving the, the award because you hung in there, many of you, um, under more difficult conditions than I did. I mean some of you were treated very badly and I, uh, John Bacchus's experience comes to mind. but. Um, that hopefully uh, will change. And I also should warn you, uh, Tom pointed out that I worked on the rover program. That was an effort to make a nuclear rocket. Uh, if, had, if it had continued, we'd be on Mars today. Mm. Uh, it was killed by the Nixon administration to gain money to bomb North Vietnam. Mm. Um, but it was killed so rapidly that it, um, the, the technology was lost. And so that was my first career <coughs> where the rug was pulled out from under me. The second one was the SP-100 program. That was an effort to put a nuclear, rock, a nuclear reactor in space for communication and for observation. And the Cold War ended, and that died after spending many billions of dollars. And so now I'm in the cold fusion. <laughs> so I've got to be a little careful. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>